Good morning, folks. I hope last night you caught part two of the next disaster. It will be linked with part one right below this video if you missed it. But we're diving right in today with the sun and look at the size of that filament just over the limb. That's one you don't want erupting at Earth. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were indeed quiet. No solar flares and we'll see why momentarily. We're eyeing the next coronal hole system visible top left incoming. And right now the solar wind is pretty calm. Blue panel right in the middle, the phi angle flip yesterday, which is why the plasma speed is on a slight rise, and other telemetry markers jittered at the time. This was about as calm a sector boundary crossing as we get. Geomagnetic conditions are quiet. And so we're off to the sunspots. They're not flaring because the leader on the right is an active region to itself and has nobody to play with, and in back, those two sunspots have lost any peripheral umbra they had and are set up in the middle school dance fashion. No interaction between the boys and girls, and we get no sparks. Savvy? Speaking of a spark, where have you been, Chile? The most seismically active country in the Western Hemisphere has been very underperforming until yesterday's rumble in the South. Interestingly, the five-pointer in Croatia is actually much more rare of an event. Lastly, beneath our feet, or at least what used to be, material ejecting at Mount Otake in Japan. Still image sequences from these monitoring stations only. So one of the things we discussed in last night's video was the Parker Spiral, the electric current sheet that comes with every toroidal system housing a rotating sphere magnet, aka stars, galaxies, etc. Well here's what they are going to look like for the solar wind in the future. The Enlil Spirals are one of the more frustratingly ancient aspects of modern space weather modeling of that Parker Spiral, and this is what we should have soon. Up next. The strongest storms, the biggest lightning, the most inundating deluges, all come with high convective atmospheric potential energy, or CAPE. This is a great way to tell where some of the strongest storms are going to be found, and today we're learning that the high outlier events, or the really bad weather, can't be captured by the model. But the incredible thing is that their quintessential example of an underestimating CAPE moment in the models came in May of 2012. The computers had nothing for the convective energy and overall juice of the sky, especially the up and down motion. It was, of course, due to the peak of space weather last sunspot cycle, which basically encompassed all of 2012, peaking right in the middle of the year, along with significant particle events as we've been describing. And if you are new here and have been wondering, okay, so we've got particle and magnetic field influence from the sun and is starting to be better understood, but what do we look for here on the ground? Great question. An extremification of the storms for one. The up and down churning of Earth weather is amplified by the global electric circuit. And remember, we just literally saw a few days ago a paper about how when energetic particles impact, the vertical flows become as important or more important than the horizontal ones. Hashtag solar forcing. And last but not least, we come back to the recurrent NOVA concepts from last night's video. If you recall, part of our presentation was the summary of the papers we've seen this year on Maybe it doesn't have to be a red giant donor star. Maybe it can be any donor star, to a couple where they can't find a degenerate star or donor star of any kind, not to mention the poor little star that wandered into a molecular cloud. The translation is that the mechanism of smaller nova described now does not require a donor star, just a similar change in atmospheric composition of that star, the intrusion of dust and gas, the interference of electromagnetism or interruptive tendencies of plasma turbulence. Today, we find a survey of these supposed white dwarf binary systems. They don't exactly come out with that perfect donor model for these either. We have two quickly classified distant systems, based on assumptions and fitting an idea, rather than the data. If you understood the expanded Nova Trigger model described last night and again here, we smile at this manuscript today. We greatly appreciate your support. As for your questions about the next disaster, first, the half cycle 6,000 years ago, Noah, the Sumerians, Hindu, and about everyone else alive at the time had plenty to say about it. As for the opening in this video, I have no idea what you're talking about. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.